Position the patient's arm at 90 degrees or less. Be careful not to stress the brachial plexus. One person should support the patient's forearm while the second loosens the knobs. Place the arm in the desired position and tighten all of the knobs. Check that the ulnar nerve is free from pressure. For extra protection, you can add foam under the patient's elbow. Finally, adjust the hand support so that it contours to the patient's palm. Now it is time to adjust the patient's head. Rest the patient's face in the C-prone mask. Adjust the position of the C-prone so that the face is fully supported. One person should take hold of the mask. A second person should attach the handle and loosen the mask. After placing the patient's head in the desired position, tighten the handle and remove it from the stud so that the mask cannot accidentally be released. Adjust the mirror so that you can see the patient's face. The patient's eyes should be visible and free from pressure. The patient's chin should be fully supported on the chin rest. The intubation tube can be attached through the center of the mask. Alternately, it can be placed in the channel near the patient's chin. The C-flex can always be used in place of the C-prone. The C-flex allows wider range of positions and may be useful when working with extremely kyphotic patients, those with severe scoliosis, or when traction is required. Someone should always guide the head during adjustment. After adjustment, apply light pressure to the C-flex to ensure that it is locked. Adjust the twin mirrors to view the patient's face. Powering the OR table intraoperatively flexes the patient, which results in the patient's legs dropping and, in turn, creates a pulling action that flattens out the lumbar spine. This opens the vertebral disc space, which can aid in procedures such as discectomies, osteotomies, and artificial discs. Bringing the patient into lordosis or extreme lordosis will close the disc space. This position may be useful for fusions. If you do choose to lock the brake at the base of the frame, remember to unlock it when using intraoperative flex. The recommended products for supine procedures include four supine tops to cover the length of the frame. Arm boards can be used if desired. Adjust the frame and stretcher heights as we did for prone positioning. Bring the stretcher flush against the frame. Lock the stretcher. A sheet draw can be used to transfer a supine patient from the stretcher to the frame. Powering the OR table intraoperatively flexes the patient, which arches the back and in turn opens the anterior disc space. This position may aid in anterior disc removal and implant insertion. The C-flex in combination with the supine tops creates a platform for anterior cervical procedures. The patient's head and neck can be flexed, extended, and rotated for procedures such as discectomies and artificial discs. The recommended products for posterior cervical procedures include the wing set system, the C-flex, and a sheet for wrapping the patient's arms. There are two methods for attaching a skull clamp to the C-flex. The first step for both methods is to attach the skull clamp to the patient's head following the manufacturer's instructions. In the first method, attach the starburst adapter to the skull clamp while the patient is still supine on the stretcher. Roll the patient onto the frame. Place the patient's head in the desired position. Move the C-flex toward the skull clamp and drive it into the cone. Tighten the knob on the side of the housing and lightly press on the C-flex to ensure that it is locked. If there is still play in the skull clamp after tightening the knob, try retightening it while a second person pulls up on the skull clamp. In the second method, the starburst adapter is attached to the C-flex before transferring the patient. Roll the patient onto the frame as before. 
Move the C-Flex to the skull clamp. Line up the starburst patterns and screw the adapter to the skull clamp. Tuck the patient's arms at her sides using the sheet draped between the wing set pieces. The recommended products for lateral procedures include the C-Flex and the wing set system, one prone arm board, and one standard arm board. To better cushion the patient's hip, replace the flat center pad from the hip wing set with the wing set lateral hip pad. When positioning laterally, first transfer the patient supine onto the frame. Remove the stretcher. Cross the patient's arms over her chest. Reach under the shoulders and hug the patient from behind as you lift and rotate. Be sure to cup the patient's lower elbow so that it will not get bumped during the turn. Attach a standard arm board to the frame. Still protecting the elbow, rest the patient's lower arm on the arm board. Attach a prone arm board to the frame. Position the patient's upper arm on the forearm support. Adjust the C-flex so that the patient's head is fully supported and no part of the headpiece protrudes past the patient's chin into the neck. Apply light pressure to the C-flex to ensure that it is locked. Lateral braces can be used to support the patient in a fully lateral position. These can be attached to the rails of the OR table using standard rail clamps. To further stabilize the patient, you can apply a safety strap across the upper thigh. This can also be attached directly to the OR table rails. Powering the OR table will flex the patient and, in turn, open the lateral disc space. While flexing, readjust the C-flex so that the patient's head is properly supported as it shifts with increased flex. Lowering the frame height will increase flex further. For combined lateral and prone procedures, the patient can be rotated and repositioned right on the frame. Remove both arm boards and cross the patient's arms over her chest. Again, reach under the shoulders and hug the patient from behind as you lift and rotate, cupping the patient's lower elbow as you turn. Attach the prone arm boards to the frame and position the patient's arms at 90 degrees or less, being careful not to stress the brachial plexus. Adjust the patient's head position, making sure a second person guides the head during adjustment. Adjust the mirrors, check that the patient's eyes are free from pressure and that the chin is fully supported on the chin rest.